Great news again, with the latest 2023 statistics on the Great Barrier Reef showing exceptionally high amounts of coral, record equaling in fact. The data just released by the Australian Institute of Marine Science aims in their yearly survey. Here it is. This is what it looks like. A slight tick down from last year, but when you take into account the uncertainty margin, there's no statistical difference between this year and last year's record-breaking result. So two years in a row where the coral has been higher than at any time since records began 40 years ago. Now, a quick comment on the way that AIMS take their data. They survey roughly 100 of the 3,000 reefs of the Great Barrier Reef by towing a diver around the perimeter of the reefs, and they estimate the coral cover roughly every 100 metres, and then they add it up. So, for example, 0.3 coral cover means that about 30% of the seabed is covered with coral. Now, coral reefs are not just made of hard coral. There's also sand, coralline algae, algae, soft corals, dead coral, and the like. But make no mistake about it, this data, which has been collected by AIMS for decades now, is a monumental effort. I estimate that, estimate that AIMS has towed a diver a fair fraction of the way around the world equivalent in the time that they've been collecting this data. And they kind of look a little bit like a human lure trolling for sharks. One point, however, is that AIMS in their reports do not add up the data for all the reefs to give a single number for the average of the entire Great Barrier Reef. I have to do that for, for them. Now, strangely, they add up the data for, say, a dozen reefs to give a data or a graph for one of the 11 major sectors of the reef. They also add up the data for, say, 30 of the reefs to get a number for one of the three major regions of the reef, the northern, the central, and the southern reefs. But for some reason, they won't add up the data for the 100 reefs to give a data point or the average for the entire Great Barrier Reef. Why can't they do this? I did it for them. It only takes a few minutes. That's, after all, what the public are interested in. What is the data for the whole reef? Now, strangely, they used to do that up to about 2017. And they should start to do it again because it was notable that last year's, with the exceptional high coral cover, because Ames did not publish the number for the entire reef, the full extent of the good news uh, did not get out to the world's media. Now, last year, many scientists and many of the major science institutions made all sorts of lame excuses for why the coral cover was so high. After all, they'd just been proclaiming four major devastating bleaching events since 2016. 2016, 2017, 2020, 2022. So record high coral cover must for them have been extremely embarrassing. One might imagine the crisis talks at the reef science institutions. How on earth are we going to explain this wonderful news? But what their predictions lacked in terms of scientific accuracy, they more than made up for by imagination and, frankly, political spin. Some dam damned the news with faint praise. It showed that the reef had some resilience, but it was still doomed from climate change. Others managed to twist the story to make the good news into bad news. It was only the fast-growing corals, Cordocropora, which actually are the most, be most beautiful-looking corals, that had recovered, and these were more susceptible to climate change, and therefore the reef was even more susceptible to being damaged in the future. So somehow all this record-breaking coral made the reef more doomed than ever. Never mind that the Acropora still takes five to ten years to grow and was supposedly killed off by those four major hot water bleaching events. The only conclusion you can draw is that they must have been non-events. Please like and subscribe. Now look, the data shows the Great Barrier Reef is brilliant. And it's huge, it's as big as Germany, it's a long way from a coastline 
which is 2,000 kilometres long with only a million people on it. There's negligible people pressure on the reef. There are no introduced pests, um, which, are, which are a terrible problem for the rest of Australian mainland. The whole reef is a national park with incredibly strict rules. Climate change has so far had absolutely no impact at all. We have record high coral. So let's stop claiming that the reef is doomed and start to worry about other environmental problems. What about this utter destruction on the coastline adjacent to the reef in the tropical wet sclerophyll forest, one of the rarest types of vegetation in the whole of Australia? Why is there no outcry about this? Why are we still crying about in our beer about the Great Barrier Reef when it is at record high coral? But the institutions just won't admit that record high coral is wonderful news, even though it's obvious. It actually utterly proves that they have been totally wrong or have actually deliberately deceived us about the extent of the coral loss in the bleaching events. It proves that the institutions have been untrustworthy. The truth is that we've been scammed for decades and the, the perpetrators have now been caught out by this wonderful data. The problem is uh, we need to subject them to serious scrutiny. Have they become ideological? Are they inclined to groupthink? Are they motivated by the funding imperative which relies on the reef being doomed in perpetuity? How do they handle these dissenters? Are they welcomed or are they ostracised? What are their quality assurance systems which have clearly failed? How did they get this wrong, so wrong, for 60 years? I was in primary school when I first heard that the reef was doomed within a decade and it just keeps on going. But within a few years, there will be a big cyclone and the amount of the coral on the reef will collapse. Cyclones are like bushfires on the mainland in the sense that they are natural and it looks terrible afterwards. Or there may be another plague of crown of thorns starfish, which are entirely natural. The amount of coral will reduce. Doubtless the headlines will say that we've lost half the coral or whatever. Just like they proclaimed many times in the past, occasionally even truthfully after major events. The science institutions will then be happy. The money will keep flowing. The children will remain depressed. More costly red tape will be imposed on the farmers to save the reef. And the reef tour tourist industry will get kicked in the teeth yet again by the bad publicity. Or maybe we've finally reached the stage that enough people can see that the institutions have been untrustworthy. They cry wolf every time some coral dies. They even cry wolf when there's record amounts of coral. There is no doubt that many people can now see through their antics. A poll by the Australian Environment Foundation earlier this year found that only half of the people believe that the reef, reef is in poor shape. This despite a continuous barrage of doom science and bad press for six decades. But people are not buying it anymore. I've been calling for better quality of the science institutions so that we can actually start to trust them again. Politicians are starting to take note, especially behind the scenes out of the public's gaze. More and more of them, I'm confident, will start to ask to audit reef science. And when that happens, the full extent of the deception is going to be revealed. In the meantime, tell everyone you know, did you read that the Great Barrier Reef has never had more coral? That's good news, isn't it? Well, thanks for watching. If you want more information, they're in the Plato GBR website below. And also, if you have suggestions for topics you want us to cover in the future, put those in the comments. We read all the comments. Thanks very much. <laughs>